Yo, hey, what's up? Pastor Matt here. Hey, I got a great question on my YouTube page the other day. One of my viewers was asking, what's the difference between regeneration, conversion, and sanctification? And the viewer rightly conjectured that sanctification must come last in that order. So let's talk about that today. Uh, the discussion we are having is often called the topic of the Ordo Salutis. And I'll get out of the way here and let you look at this whiteboard for just a moment. But I want to first suggest that the terms that I'm using today are mostly biblical. In fact, we can find several of them in order in Romans chapter 8. And here's what the scripture says. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, here's the key terms, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among, among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called and those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. And with that, we have what is called the ordo salutis, or the order of salvation, because there is a logical order and progression to the ways that God acts in our lives in order to accomplish our salvation. So let's go ahead and take a look, first of all, at those items that are mentioned in the Romans list, and then we'll throw in a couple other ones that aren't mentioned, but are certainly part of the biblical process. Of salvation. So first of all, here's the ones that Paul uses in that passage. Foreknowledge, which very often means to forelove or to love, because knowledge in the Bible, to know somebody is to love them. Uh, logically connected to God's sovereign act of predestination. We shouldn't get tripped up about that word. It's right in the Bible. Uh, Romans 8, Ephesians 1, the word is in the Bible. It simply means that God pre, ahead of time, destines or sets our eternal destiny, whether or not we're going to be saved or to go to hell. Okay, A lot more could be said about that one, and we'll talk about that on other occasions. But for the moment, I'll just, uh, I'll just suffice it to say, go look through Ephesians chapter 1 and see how the term election or predestination is used in the biblical concept. It's always God's uh, initiatory act of grace in our lives that brings about our salvation through Jesus Christ. An eternal act that God has done. Okay, a uh, calling. Now, calling here, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to split a hair, because there are two ways that God actually calls us in the Scriptures, and we're gonna call one of these the external, and the other one we're gonna call the effectual calling. And that there's an important distinction there, because the external calling has to do with the setting or circumstances in which we come to believe. Uh, maybe you came to believe at Vacation Bible School. Maybe you came to Christ at a Billy Graham crusade or uh, a good sermon from your pastor. Well, that's the external circumstances of your calling. But the Bible also has um, a strong implication of an internal calling that God calls us or draws us to himself through the Holy Spirit. And it's that one that I think that Paul has in mind in this particular instance because the calling, when he draws us to himself through his grace, that calling results in what the Bible also speaks of as regeneration. Uh, big word, fancy word, re meaning again, generation meaning to come alive. And this is exactly what Jesus is talking about in John chapter 3 when he says we must be born again. That's the process of regeneration. That comes through the Spirit's effectual calling and drawing on us to repent and to believe and to turn to him. And so I have regeneration uh, arrowing over to both faith and repentance, because uh, in order to convert or to come to Christ, we need to change directions from our sinful nature, turning to him, seeking his grace and favor. And by the way, we who are Reformed theologians, or Calvinistic, as opposed to Arminian theologians, we insist uh, that it is regeneration that precedes and causes faith. It's God working in us first before we turn to him. The Arminians, we think, have that backwards. Uh, again, we could debate that on another occasion. Okay, then Paul goes to justification. This is the big one. This is the one that Luther calls the hinge of on, on which the door of salvation swings. Justification is an act of God's free grace where he declares us to be righteous, even though we are, in fact, still sinners. Martin Luther used to call that simul justus et peccator, simultaneously just and yet still a sinner. So we're still sinners even after we get saved. You knew that, right? Have you been struggling to sin? Me too. Uh, and yet God declares us to be just by grace through faith. And then finally, uh, we have the last one in Paul's string of terms here, which would be glorification. 
that has not happened to you yet, and it hasn't happened yet to me, because glorification is the day or the time when Christ returns or we die, and God perfects us, finally eradicates the sinful nature uh, from us and makes us fit to be with him in heaven forever. So there it is, the Ordo Salutis, foreknowledge, predestination, calling, justification, glorification. Now, we want to talk about sanctification for a moment because that's where you're at right now and that's where I'm at. Sanctification is a process. It's a lifelong process. And it's the process by which and through which we become more like Christ, more like him in his character, more like him in his attributes. And God uses everything that we're going through right now, our sufferings, our trials, our criticisms, our victories, our challenges, all of that God is using to make us more and more like Jesus Christ. So if you were going to say, where are you on this list? If you're a Christian today, you are being sanctified and being prepared. And one day, thank goodness, uh, we will finally be glorified when we are made like him in his excellency. We'll never be, of course, as great as Christ. He's, he is the Lord, the Son of God, seated at the right hand of the Father. Uh, but we will be made like him when we see him as he is, says the Apostle John in his letters. Well, thanks for checking in. I hope this was helpful to you. I do have a couple of recommendations for you, by the way, of books. First of all, let me mention R.C. Sproul's excellent book, What is Reformed Theology, where he has a whole half of the book is going through the Ordo Salutis. I think that'd be great. And if I could be so daring, uh, my book on the Westminster Confession of Faith, Hold Fast the Faith is the title. That, too, has a lot to say about all of these things as they come up in the Reformed confessions, the Westminster Standards. Hey, thanks for checking in today. I will put a link to those books that I just mentioned in the description of this video. Hope that was helpful to somebody out there. Love you lots. Check you later.